Hey everyone, Pep here, and in today's video, I want to talk about the Steam Awards, which for those that don't know, the Steam Awards are an annual user-voted award event for video games uh, published on Valve's Steam website, where every year since 2016, the user uh, votes or nominates games based on the categories that Valve sets out. So there's two phases where the community first picks games to nominate into that category. Then it follows up with a second phase where the finalists get shown in each of the categories and the community votes uh, for, for the best game in that category. And for a while now, for about six, yeah, seven years, it's it's been it's been pretty solid. There hasn't been any complaints. The games that that win those awards deserve the praise for whatever category or thing that it may be. Um, and it's been really good. Um, especially last year, uh, not last year, the year before, 2022. 2022's games, even though 2022 wasn't the best year uh, for gaming, if I'm going to be honest, there was still some standout games, and the Steam Awards really highlighted those games, like Elden Ring, for example, right? I can't even think of any other games off the top of my head because I didn't really play that much in 2022 in terms of new games. But Steam Awards has always been really cool in that the user gets to vote for the games that deserve awards as opposed to like the game awards for example where um awards for those uh, awards uh for like that ceremony get picked off of a group of journalists or like a few hundred people it's it, it's technically does have the support of the community but i feel like with that one it more or less comes down to the people that pick the games in there so but in a sense they're both similar <laughs> now that i think about it but you would think that the Steam Awards would be a net positive, right? Because the user, you know, because the community votes for it. But the 2023, that unfortunately wasn't the case. I think this is the worst Steam Awards list I've ever seen. Even though some of the categories in here and the games that are in there make complete sense. I think uh, they deserve it. Quick mentions, Best Story Rich and Game of the Year going to Baldur's Gate 3. Well deserved. I think out of the finalists that were on those lists... Nothing could be Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is fantastic. One of the best RPGs of our time. And a bucket list game that everyone should pick up and play. It is, It really is that good. So well done to Larian for winning those two awards. But the main three awards that I do want to talk about are The Labor of Love, The Most Innovative Gameplay, and Best Soundtrack. These are the three that shook me the most because it just doesn't make any sense to me. So... We'll start off with Labor of Love. So Labor of Love, Labor of Loves um, is, uh, the Labor of Love award means a game that has been out for X amount of years, but continues to get poured out with content. So content comes out, whether it's like a live service game, like Apex or Siege, that continues to get content updates every few months in order to keep the game fresh. And that's what Labor of Love is really all about. Uh, the finalists were Rust, Red Dead Redemption 2, Apex Legends, Deep Rock, and Dota 2, which Rust, I feel like, should have, or in my opinion, should have won this, because every month, Rust gets, like, a massive update. They always add a bunch of new things, and Face Punch have been really, like, putting in the work to make Rust the best survival game it can be, even though it can be as positive or as toxic as you want it. it that game gets a lot of content, and shout out to Face Punch. Apex, I feel like Apex could have won as well, given that a lot of, Apex is one of the most played games on Steam. It remains to be top five almost every day. Not even almost, every single day. So you would think Apex would win. A lot of people will probably vote for Apex because, you know, one, they play it, and two, a lot of people play it. So it makes sense. Oh, I forgot to mention Red Dead 2. Red Dead 2, actually, no, no, we'll come back to that one. Deep Rock Galactic. I think it's another good choice as well, even though it did win Labor of Love, I think in 2021 or 2022 was one of those years. But it did win Labor of Love before, and I think given the recent controversy or like surroundings of, you know, the studio making a second game called Road Core and Survivor, and then steadily, well, not steadily, but slowing down updates for DRG, I think that's probably the reason why a lot of people decided not to vote for it, which honestly wouldn't surprise me. And Dota 2 is also another top 5 game on Steam basically every day. That game, I don't know about its updates or how the cycle works with Dota 2, but I mean, Dota 2 is has always been a relevant game for the longest time and, you know, it competes with League and they always continue to get, I guess, new things and all that. I'm, I'm not really too sure on content for Dota 2, but I could see why it's on the list. And now we have the final option, which ended up being the freaking win. I already spoiled it, but screw it. 
Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, as great of a game as Red Dead is, thanks to its immersion, open world, great story, and just so many things that people still discover after so many years of it being out, it somehow managed to win the Labor of Love award. And the reason why I think this is complete false and should not win this freaking award is because Red Dead 2 hasn't had an update in like two years. They stopped making updates for the game back in 2021. They, they stopped because of GTA Online success. If anything, GTA 5 should be here instead of Red Dead 2, but Red Dead 2 decided to be a finalist for some stupid reason. It didn't make any sense to me at the time. And it still doesn't make sense to me now why people decided to put or nominate Red Dead 2 in there. Like GTA 6 trailer just came out a month ago and we're deciding to put Red Dead 2 in the labor of love. If anything, Grand Theft Auto 5 should be on that list. If it was Grand Theft Auto 5, it would have won by, by a long shot, for sure. GTA Online's updates are like massive, usually massive. And a lot of people play GTA Online. So, you know, I think that that would be the better choice. But for some reason, they decided to scrap that and put Red Dead 2 in here. In, which even though the community is keeping the online servers for as long as they are active, for as long as they can, before it eventually does die out, Rockstar's been leaving it to wither for about two years since the since they decided to, to stop updates um, because of GDA Online success. And it's just, it, it just shocks me. It really does, because it doesn't make any sense why Red Dead 2 would be on this list. Let alone just a finalist. It, it, it's, they haven't done anything with the game. Like, I, I think Rockstar would probably be shocked at, is probably shocked at seeing that, you know, seeing that they won this on Steam. They're probably shocked about it too, so... Yeah, I think any other game in this list would have been a fair winner, but not Red Dead 2. It just it hasn't gotten updates in two years. Best thing they do is just is just replay the same special events like the Christmas event or the Halloween events on loop. They add some like some new contract missions and that's it. There's no hasn't been any major updates. So yeah, that that's that is just ridiculous to me. Um, the next one to talk about is the most innovative gameplay award. So this is for games that, as it says in the in the name, innovate and do and try different things that you wouldn't see other studios do. Um, the options here, I don't really know too much about these games, but I can definitely the only game I do know about is Remnant 2, which I have made a video on. And Remnant 2, I, I can definitely see that being innovative in that it kind of takes souls like but adds guns to it, even though they've done it in the past with Remnant from the Ashes. But I think they really perfected that formula this time around with Remnant 2. And I can see that being innovating in that. You know, the key to that game is, is exploration and secrets. It's all about finding things. That's what makes Remnant 2 um, a satisfying and fun game. Not to mention all the additional uh, stuff they've added to improve, to further improve the formula and just make it really fun. And it's, it plus it's a blast with friends as well. So... I can see why it's on this list. Contraband Police, Your Only Move is Hustle, and Shadows of Doubt. I don't know too much about those games, but from the names, I can probably tell that they both, they all do their own things, and I can see how they break uh, the gaming landscape. And then there's the winner, Starfield. Starfield. Of all games that are on this list and became a finalist, it was Starfield. I don't really see what Starfield does so innovating, Oh yeah, you have a ship that you can fly around to procedurally generate a planet or whatever the hell, however the heck the planets work and explore all kinds of creatures and lands and cool things. Like, yeah, you can customize your ship. That's cool. That's never been done before. Never. Like, Starfield is pretty much what No Man's Sky is. It's pretty much No Man's Sky, but a first person shooter RPG. That's pretty much No Man's Sky. Oh, that's, that's pretty much Starfield. Sorry. And... I don't really see what our Starfield does aside from it being a sci-fi Bethesda game. Like, and Bethesda games are always the same in terms of their formulas. They, they give you the freedom to go wherever you want. You have the tools to explore at your own will. There's no limits. There's no, there's no, um, like, you know, like level caps. Like you can pretty much do whatever you want and create your own experiences. That's the beauty of Bethesda games though. But at the same time, like most RPGs, are. Uh, either similar or if not the same as a Bethesda game. I just don't really see how Starfield innovates in the RPG lands landscape of things. If anything, Baldur's Gate 3 
arguably innovates um, the CRPG formula by giving you full roleplay of your character. I know that may not be the best argument, but you can really roleplay the class and character that you play in Baldur's Gate 3. So for me, I, I roleplayed an Orc Barbarian, and every option I saw with Orc or Barbarian in it, I took it. I did it. Because I wanted to roleplay and feel my character. It's, which is also another one of the you know beauties of the D&D universe is that you know when if you've played D&D before you can really immerse um and play the character that and role play the and truly role play the character that you're playing that's what makes D&D fantastic and that's what makes Baldur's Gate work so well with you know D&D 5th edition rules to be able to create these experiences like i just think that like, that alone sounds more innovative than a Bethesda RPG, which is pretty much similar and, and set in stone formula from all their other games, but just in space. Like, they're re I don't really see anything that is like that. If anything, like, yeah, like I said, No Man's Sky has done everything that Starfield has, does, but better. And over time, it has become one of... It, it has gone from the, one of the worst games to ever release to one of the best games to be out now. It's a really fun game. For those that love ex exploration and finding things like no man's sky is the way to go for like it, it just it helps to innovate that sort of genre i just don't think starfield does anything exciting if there was something exciting i would say it right now but there really isn't i don't think there's anything exciting about starfield at all so no last thing to talk about is the best soundtrack award now this one i think all the nominations here are uh a, a, a fair you know uh persona 5 tactics tactica or tactics i think it's tactica uh pizza Tau, yeah pizza Tau's um ost is listened to it recently it's pretty good high fire rush is is a great one of course like high fire rush is, is is all about rhythm so of course that had to be nominated and high fire rush was also a surprise hit that no one expected you know they marketed that game at the last minute and it ended up being one of the best games of 2023 a uh, chance of Sena. Haven't heard of this game, but it, it, I, yeah, I, I don't really speak much on that one. And the unfortunate winner, well, uh, fortunate, fortunate, take out, unfortunate, take how you will, is Last of Us Part One. Last of Us Part One. Like, I don't understand. They had this trend last year in 2022 where they where they opted to put older games or like games that have come out for PC that have been out previously, like Spider-Man, for example, they, they opted that to be a nominee for Game of the Year. And even though, like, it's not bad, like, I'm not going to get a mad over it. It's a game that came out years ago. And I have to have the same argument about Last of Us Part 1 winning the Best Soundtrack Award. I think this nominee or this winner does not make any sense. Like, for those that have played Last of Us Part 1, which I'm assuming a lot of people have, it's one of the best games of our time. And in my opinion, the best Naughty Dog game ever made um the soundtrack for this game is amazing it's really good naughty dog killed it back in 2013 yeah great soundtrack we're nominating for a 10 year old but when you nominate sorry for a 10 year old ost in 2023 i just don't i don't get it i don't understand why this got nominated or this one i don't really get it and i don't even think a lot of people played last of us part one on pc that year either it doesn't have like too many reviews so either people on pc have played it on console enough to just say yeah let's just vote for this because all the other albums are ass or just it's Valve's doing for even putting that game in there as as much i hate to say it but this soundtrack came out 10 years ago and i feel like it could have been replaced with any other soundtrack that came out recently when it comes to awards like this you shouldn't they shouldn't a valve shouldn't opt to put older games in here like even if it's, even though it's a remaster and people playing for the first time on pc i get that it's a soundtrack that a lot of people have heard years ago it, it just should not be on this list if anything i would have loved to see dark tide on this list dark tide came out in 2022 but i think that was that that OST is one of the best OSTs I've heard in a really long time. They Jasper Kid nailed, or Jasper Kid, I forgot. Sorry if I butchered the name. He nailed the OST with Dark Tide. Fits the tone perfectly. I would have rather see that in there than Last of Us Part One. And that leads me to my theory, which I think even though it gets voted by the community, I think Valve has some sort of play in how they put their 
finalists and how they put their winners in there because frankly speaking last of us part one i mean compared to the other games here that are all new like hi-fi rush or persona 5 tactical should have been on there um to back up my so like supposed theory i guess um uh labor of love like red dead redemption 2 you know i don't even though a lot of people did play it last year i don't think a lot of people would have voted for it like or maybe no We'll go to, we'll, we'll do Starfield. Perfect example. 95%, I believe, 95% of the average gamer would not vote for Starfield as as an, as, as an innovative game. It doesn't really change anything. It doesn't change anything. It just, if, the, if there's one thing it changes, it's Bethesda going to fucking space. That's for sure. Everything else, it doesn't change shit. And I think Valve may have something to do with also influencing or like putting in the supposed winners as opposed to just the community voting. Now look, I don't really want to go too far other than just Valve playing behind the books or playing by their own books, sorry, and maybe just putting these games in there because they just want to have a laugh. But if if that's not the case, and you know, the main thing is the community are just stupid. We're stupid enough to put Starfield in here or vote for Starfield because we just want to fuck around. We just want to joke. We want to have a laugh. And even though Valve will never disclose the information or about the votes or how many votes got what for each game, even if they did, I think the community would be extremely disappointed regardless. And that's why I think the 2023 awards are a joke. In general, and just and helps me worry about future years. Because if they're going to keep adding remastered games alongside these lists, or just put games in here that make absolutely no sense to be on this list, I really don't know. And I don't, and at the end of the day, I don't know who's that fault. I don't know if it's Valve's fault or the community. I don't know whose fault it could be. Which leads to lots of speculation. Like people want to speculate that it's Valve's doing for putting these games in here, us for voting for the games. Like there's no there's no one side. It's not one sided. It's both it's both sides that are being argued, and it's just a matter of I guess who who what you want to believe, right? Now to their credit, the other awards were were pretty solid. Best game you suck at, seafood, well deserved. Sit back and relax going to Day of the Diver. Also well-deserved. Great game. Peaked, peaked like 90,000 plus players. And ended up being just a really chill game. Compared to everything else on the list. I just think Day of the Diver was going to knock it out of the park. Because of how much it sold. So well done to, to Day of the Diver. Visual style going to Atomic Car. Uh, I'm a bit 50-50 on this. I think Cocoon. I think Cocoon looked a lot, looks a lot better than all the games on here. Um, but uh, Atomic Card is still pretty good. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's more about the uh, the setting that they were going for, which is like a Soviet um, setting similar to like Bioshock. Um, so I, I can see that. Lethal Company, even though this game came out so late, it's no surprise that Lethal Company won better with friends. I mean, it was one of the top sellers on Steam last year. It just within the month. And it piqued streamers' interest and player interest that even to this day, it's still relevant and peaking hundreds of thousands of players. So yeah, Lethal Company is a excellent excellent game well deserved award there best game on steam deck going to hogwarts legacy i was shocked at hogwarts legacy i thought it would be dredge or potato because those games are a lot simpler to play and it's easier to play those on the steam deck than playing hogwarts legacy but i mean I i'm i'm can't be mad here hogwarts legacy is a really good game so see and yeah so well deserved for that vr game of the year going to labyrinthy i think that's how you say it labyrinthian i think that's how you say it that's the uh, horror game from what I recall. Um, I voted for Ghost of Tabor because uh, Ghost of Tabor just looked so sick compared to the other options here. But Labyrinthian is also a good game. And yeah, that that's that's about it. I, you know, those awards are kind of fair, but those three awards just make me just go to show how much of a joke uh, the community, both the community and Valve are. More, I'm more so on the side of the community. Like, if the community is seriously voting for Starfield, y'all are stupid. Like, straight up. But I'm I'm also inclined to believe that 95% of the average of average gamers would not vote for Starfield. Even if they even if they haven't played it, they would not vote for this. No way. I don't think Starfield does anything spectacular compared to the the other games that are on this list. So yeah, that's it for me. Um, I'm hoping that. 2024 will be better but given all the game award trailers we saw in the in the tgas and stuff i personally don't think 2024 is going to be a goaded year but who knows maybe this year will surprise us and we'll get like a banger game or something who knows
So yeah, take care everybody and I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.